All right, I'm gonna do a little bit of time on uh, wideband O2 sensors. Uh, if you're gonna be putting MegaSquirt on your car for performance reasons, which probably 99% of people do, uh, getting some feedback on how your engine is actually burning the fuel is really important. Um, you can get away with a narrow band for sure, uh, but for the money, I think I spent 150 on mine. Uh, I got the uh, Innovative Motorsports brand or Innovate Motorsports brand uh, LC1 for my car, and I like it. It seems really nice. So a lot of people use the AEM uh, versions as well. They do have a uh, analog output that's compatible with MegaSquirt, so that's good. Uh, a lot of them will actually run a simulated O2 output as well if you wanted to uh, run your factory ECU that expects a narrow band and you have a wide band. So anyway, to understand the wide band uh, technology, you kind of need to understand the narrow band technology. Basically, this is a, a exhaust manifold off my Camaro. Uh, so this is one side of the V8. Inside uh, this exhaust passageway, there's a there's a small O2 sensor. Can't get it in focus and hold the light. But uh, coming out here is the body of the O2 sensor and the pigtail that comes off for the connector. So that would eventually get back to your ECU. The V8 Camaro has uh, one on each side. Sometimes cars will have one in kind of upstream of the cat, one downstream of the cat, so that they can see how well the catalytic converter is working, stuff like that. Um, this car actually came with two factory. Uh, those that are, are still in, uh, but I'm not going to be using them for anything really since the ECU is all disabled now. Um, if you look at here's the turbo, uh, the exhaust manifold comes out, spins the turbo. This is the intake side of the turbo, but the exhaust comes through here uh, and down this downpipe. And if you look down in here, you can see the wideband O2 sensor going in. Basically, looks just like this other one. Um, this is a narrow band, that's a wideband. Um, and so the cabling for the wideband comes back to the controller. Um, you don't get just five volts right out of it. It has to heat it and condition the signal and probably lots of other stuff. That's I haven't really looked that much into it, but basically uh, this black wire takes the signal all the way back through the firewall to the gauge. Uh, this is the back side of the gauge actually. Kind of ugly, but uh, you can see it through the windshield. Front side there. All right, so real quick, the difference between an actual narrow band and a wide band O2 sensor. Um, if you consider uh, your ratio is here, so you've got about 22 AFR down to uh, call it like 10 AFR. Oops, AFR. Um, so this is how much fuel you have. So if you're cruising along in this axis here, would be time. So if you're cruising along and your motor's running here, we'll call this 14.7. We have a gasoline motor, so that's going to be the stoichiometric, um, or some people call it stoich, but I think it's the stoichiometric uh, ratio for gasoline here. So you need 14.7 parts of air per one part of gasoline or fuel. Uh, so that's going to make a perfect burn, not be lean or rich. So um, essentially this side uh, up in 22 is going to be uh, lean, meaning you don't have enough fuel. This side is rich, meaning you have too much fuel. Not enough. Okay, so not enough fuel, too much fuel, rich. 10 AFR is very rich, 22 AFR is very lean, 14.7 is about right. So as you're driving along across time, your car may be doing something like this. Or if things go wrong, maybe you jump way lean or you go way rich. So that's just the curve of how your engine's going to run. Or if it's badly tuned, you know, things like this will happen. So a narrow band sensor is only really capable of reading a band right near 14.7. And so you can tell if you're at 14.7 essentially or if you are way off on one side of it or way off on the other. And so basically the sensor is only gonna report here 
or here pretty much all the time. So what the ECUs do, the stock ones, basically if you come down here and it's reporting that you're rich, it will lean out the mixture until you swing back around to lean. If you're lean, it's going to swing it back around. And so as it's changing that, you'll end up with sort of a curve that looks like this. And ideally, it's going to center around 14.7. And they do a pretty good job of that, but basically they're, they're using this kind of poor sensor uh, response where it's swinging wildly across its narrow band of uh, uh, response here and they kind of play games with it. The Mega Squirt will do that same thing, I believe, uh, and try to get you down to 14.7. Um, but really, if you just spend the money, basically, you can tell, hey, I'm at 18.0 here, um, which would be kind of on the bad side of uh, lean. So a wide band will tell you exactly where you are here. So it'll actually go here. And so if you're here, for instance, the computer not only needs, or not only knows it needs to go leaner, but it needs to know exactly how much leaner it needs to go. So um, you can set response curves and things like that to really tune it in nice. So uh, it'll actually MegaScore will do uh, target AFR tables. So you can tell it, I want to be at 14.7 while I'm in my cruise range of the VE table. Uh, or you can go, you know, typically a lot of people in cruise would want to go a little bit leaner, maybe um, be in 16 or something like that. So uh, when you want to go into boost, you need to be kind of rich. So this is particularly important on a boosted motor because anything lean, you're going to start detonating under boost, uh, stuff like that. So basically, that's the difference between a narrow band and a wide band. Wide band's much better. It functions just as well as a narrow band. Um, and I mentioned a simulated output for a lot of these narrow bands that will go to a factory ECU. Um, basically, they simulate this voltage. So they say, well, if I'm above this range that, you know, if I'm in this area here, just go ahead and output the same as a factory unit would output. And it just makes this simulated output kind of cheesy, but uh, it does what it needs to do, I think, for the factory ECU. So, uh that's it. I run that 5 volt signal uh, from the wide band here. Runs right into the uh, mega squirt. You can graph it. I mean, that's going to tell you how good your motor's running, how good your tune is, and everything. So, very quite useful. Um, exhaust gas temperature can work too if you don't have a wide band O2, but um, they're so cheap now. You might as well get one.